Hey, what's going on everybody? My name is Jay Cruz and welcome back to another video. In this one, we're gonna discuss the five guitars that I want the most right now. Before we continue with the rest of this video, please take a moment to do all of the things that help this channel grow. Like the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so, hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. Without further ado, let's get started. So it's inevitable when you have a YouTube channel that's based on guitar, and guitar gear as a whole, you start to obsess over gear. You start to search endlessly for gear as if you don't already have enough. In most cases, I'm searching for stuff that I can honestly bring on to the channel. So it's more for you. I'm looking out, you know, for, for you. Recently, I've made it my personal job on a weekly basis to try to find companies, luthiers, manufacturers, pedal builders, people that I connect with and just try to reach out to them one on one and say, hey, I want to offer my services to review your product. But in most cases, I end up down this crazy rabbit hole of gear obsession, looking at guitars that are way out of my league, way out of my price range. And then I start obsessing about them like, really I, I it's all i could think about at times it happens with pedals every once in a while but for whatever reason in this recent season it's been guitars like i've just wanted every guitar i can get my hands on so today i want to give you my top five guitars that i want in my collection at some point in my career and uh maybe this is kind of me speaking it into existence you know like you put it out there and it comes back to you type of a thing because that would be really, really nice. Coming in as my number five, the Grez Guitars Mandacino. After they sent me their uh, Folsom, I fell in love with this instrument. I knew that they were top-notch builders and the guitar was so well balanced. It sounded great. It was set up perfectly. I just know that I can trust them as builders. And though the Folsom seemed to be more of my style of the guitar, it's actually the Mandacino that kind of caught my attention the most because it is kind of that Gretsch-esque style of guitar. So to be honest with you, up until I discovered Gretsch guitars, in my top five was, was a Gretsch, a Gretsch Pro Jet, but the Mandacino seems to be more of the right choice. It seems to be more up my alley personally. The only thing I would probably do different to that guitar is just add a Bigsby because, well, I love Bigsby's, what can I say? Coming in at number four for me is a Sorokin uh, Les Paul style guitar. Ever since I saw Joey Landreth playing his gold top with P90s, I was obsessed with that guitar. And for a long time, I never even realized that it wasn't a Gibson. I thought it was just an actual 59 Gibson Les Paul gold top. Until one day when I saw like a rig rundown from him and I realized it wasn't. And it came from this guy. I've actually reached out to him and spoke to him for a little bit about possibly doing a review. Um, but because he is literally still a one man show, he can't produce guitars quick enough to get them to the people who actually buy them let alone to people who are willing to review them. And at this point, with the stamp of approval from someone like Joey Landreth, I mean, how much more promotion do you actually need, right? He's super busy, doesn't need my help, but man, do I want one of those guitars one day. It seemed like he sort of perfected the the, the mojo of what we all look for in a guitar like that. So I trust him to make that guitar from scratch. It's almost like he knows the nuances of a true gold top Les Paul. Coming in at number three is a guitar that I actually got to play at one point, and that was a Fender, believe it or not. A Fender Custom Shop though, Red Sparkle Stratocaster. This goes back to about five or six years ago, I was randomly driving through New Jersey and pulled over in this parking lot to take a break because it was a long drive for me and it just so happened to be the parking lot of a guitar center so i walked in just to see you know what was going on and they had three custom shop guitars in there now i don't know about you but that doesn't happen to me often i don't often see custom shop guitars sitting at a local guitar center it was clearly more of like a 50s vibe the neck was absolutely perfect the guitar was super balanced and was probably one of the best guitars let alone best strats I've ever played. Definitely connected with the instrument right there and then, and if money was not an option, I would have seriously taken that guitar home without any questions asked. Guitar number two might take you by surprise because it certainly took me by surprise, but I've been obsessed with this guitar ever since I discovered it, and that's a late 50s Silver Tone U2 guitar. This is a guitar that when it was originally released in the late 50s, uh, 58, 59, around there, 
it went for about $40. I think it was like $37. I, I saw this ad once that said it was $37 and you could still put it on layaway for $5 a month or something like that. It was pretty insane. Depending on the originality of the guitar and its parts, it could go from about as little to a thousand to as much as $2,500. 40 bucks in 1958 could get you $2,000 today. It's a pretty decent investment if you ask me. Those kind of guitars represent an era, an era of difference. See, you have to understand when Leo Fender came out with the Stratocaster and the Telecaster, that was revolutionary. When Les Paul came out with the with the Gibson Les Paul, those were revolutionary guitars. Before that, these guitars ruled the market and people had them. Um, yeah, so they just seem to be really, really amazing. And I'm kind of obsessed with them. So I really, really hope to own one one day. I'm very, very adamant about that. And last but not least, the number one guitar that I want to own one day is a Glory Guitars Nashville Special. I literally have photographs of this guitar saved on my phone that I often look at in my free time. Like, how obsessive is that? I actually had a couple of opportunities to purchase these guitars. I saw them come up for sale on the gear pages, um, but yeah, I just didn't really have the finances to pull the trigger. None of these guitars, by the way, are what I would consider to be affordable. They all kind of sit at around the 2000 plus range. So these are not guitars that I could easily walk out of here and purchase today on my own dime. It's just out of my price range at the moment. But this guitar in particular seems to have everything that I want in a guitar that I don't currently have right now. It's semi hollow. It's got pickups that I wouldn't normally put on a guitar that I know sound fantastic. But what really attracted me to this guitar was how they're putting the Duesenberg trims on there. Uh, as opposed to a Bigsby, it definitely is a special instrument that seems to be very well made and highly sought after. So I desperately want to have one of their guitars in my collection one day. Now there are other guitars that didn't make the top five, but it doesn't mean that I don't desperately want them. They just probably made more like the top 10, which maybe I'll reveal in a different video. But this seems to be a good starting point to start a conversation in the comment section Give me your top five. And also, I want to know what you think of my list. Uh, kind of what I'm proud about with my list is that it's not manufacturers that you all kind of are totally familiar with. I'd like to think that a couple of these guitars threw you a little bit, like you didn't even know they existed. And now that you do, good luck, because you're not going to be able to stop thinking about it. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I have one request before we end this video, and that is that you please share my content with some people. I'd like to at least have 3000 subscribers by the end of 2022, which is my second fully dedicated year here on YouTube. I want more, of course, but um, we're, we're we're not too far away from 3000. I think we could do it before the year ends. And I'm, I'm, ho I'm hoping that you guys can help me out with that. If you haven't done so, please subscribe to the channel, hit the bell notification icon so you get an alert every single time I upload a video. If you wanna help the channel out, check out some of the affiliate links. You can even donate directly to the channel by clicking the thanks button that YouTube includes on the bottom of my video. Again, thanks so much for watching and until next week.